today we are going to make a turret in Rec Room. And we're going to base our turret on the turret in Jumbotron. So to start off, we need our like model. We're just going to start off with like, with like a cylinder base, real simple stuff, nothing crazy. And we want to make that its own shape. We don't want to combine it with other stuff. And then next we're going to use just a sphere. But we need that sphere to be like the exact same size. That should be fine. That's right there in the center. Now this is actually going to be rotating and spinning and stuff. So we need to edit into it and modify where the pivot point is. So we're going to select it, hit options, center pivot on selection. And we're going to essentially leave, be leaving it in the exact same spot, right? It's turn, it's not doing anything, but it's going to be rotating around in order to follow the player. And then we need to put our, our gun and our actual gun is going to follow along this blue like axis of the pivot point. Not the best, but it's lined up with that blue line right there. And that's what we need. And we're also going to tag this object, configure it and tag it. We're going to give it something like, I don't know, we can just go turret, you know, something simple. I want to make sure that we can modify with circuits. Now, what we actually need to do is go take a look at the footage of Jumbotron to get an idea of like what kind of behavior it has. The turret is just following what seems like the closest player and then it'll freeze it's about four seconds between shots sits there and shoots at you looks around at the closest player for four seconds and then and then so on and so on so what we're going to do first off is make it follow just me just one player and then later on we'll change it so that it follows the closest so to start off with circuits we want it to constantly rotate except for when it's shooting so whenever you want something constantly happening you have to use a 30 hertz receiver or in this case we're going to try out the new update receiver okay and then i would say you know set transform but set transform has a position in there. So if you want it to move position, we don't want it to move position. We literally only want it to rotate in place. So we're going to use a set rotation. So we want to constantly set the rotation. We want to set the rotation of the rec room object, which is the target, which is that thing with the tag of turret on it. So we're going to get rec room object first with tag and hook that up there. Make sure we put in turret for the tag. So now we need to get the rotation. The rotation is going to be a vector pointing at the target for this. We'll set it up just to work with me since I'm in here. And then later on, we can change it to, to go to the closest player. But, and so we're actually going to use a player head position. If you look when you play Jumbotron, everything always shoots for your head. We're going to do local player, which is me going to my head. We need a vector that goes that points at my head and in order to do that we need to subtract some some vectors we have to subtract the position of the object that with my position or rather the position of my head so but we want to get the position of this so actually we need the position of what we're pointing at to be on top and we need the position of the where we're starting to be on the bottom there we go you can't see it because it's a different color hang on there we go. I think that looks a little bit better as a turret. So now that we have that, we need the shooting, I guess you could say. So we're going to get a projectile launcher. I'm actually going to unhook this. We're going to put it right here on the end. So we're going to clamp these two things together. In rooms 2.0, you wouldn't need a clamp. You could just wire them together individually. It's actually pretty cool. All right, so we put that on top. We put this on the bottom. So now if we reactivate this, it should follow me. All right. So now that that's kind of done, we have it following us every four and we need it to follow us for four seconds, essentially, and then fire and then go back to on. It's essentially we need to turn this 30 hertz on and off. And so we're going to do that with a bull variable and an if chip. So let's go ahead and get our if chip in here. Put that in there. We'll get a bull variable. We'll have to be have at least two, maybe three of these, but put a bull variable. And then if this bool is true, we'll make it true, then follow around. And if it's false, don't follow around. So now that we have that, we need something to do the flip flopping for us. You kind of have to have an initiation, like, like to start the turret, and then you can start the, the timing and the flip flopping back and forth. So we're just gonna use a trigger volume. And then like once somebody walks into, into the trigger volume, then we can, you know, we can start the turn. Okay. And we're going to start that with an event. So let's get an event definition here. We're going to configure it 
and name it start turret submit that okay and then we'll just have this send the event so event sender start turret we can send it locally i think i'll send it to the room authority because the room authority kind of handles everything we'll just send it to him that way it's not it's not all over the place okay so once that events once somebody goes in here we want to send this event and we can actually go ahead and put that other bool variable on here and then i can i can just walk through and it'll start following me so we have that working and now it knows to turn on we're going to have this uh, event receiver for the start turret there we go start turret okay we're going to have this start a delay because we've already set it to true whoops we've already set it to true over here which means it starts following and again we all we based on the video it follows for four seconds and then it fires so we're gonna go ahead and just hook this up to a delay so let's put that in there and then after four seconds not 40 after four seconds we want to switch this bull to false so let's clone it again turn that to false after delay make this false that'll make it stop following and then we want to make it fire so what we're going to end up doing is putting in a bunch of delays we're going to have it send our first delay which i guess we'll do i, I think when i looked at the timing it was like 0.3 seconds or something like that you can change this as you want but we're going to have it fire that one so fire once and then we're going to have it fire again so we're going to clone this that's fire one and then we're going to go fire two we want it to fire four shots remember and then maybe we'll wait like another 0.3 then after that flip the bull back to true and have it start following around so after that we basically want to start the loop all over again so we can either bring this over here and hook it up and like start the loop over again or we can have an event like send this start start turret event again i personally don't like having these cross over so we're going to do an event so it'll come through it'll say hey start this four second timer then turn it to false then have it shoot four times then turn it back to true so it starts following and then start this event all over again we walk in where, where it starts oh no it's gonna start following me and then four seconds later it should stop oh, that was so that was so instant oh my gosh that scared me to be honest so we've got another trigger volume over here that we're going to use to like stop it let's say that there's like an area that players get to they're in this area it shoots at them once they hit this other trigger volume they're out of range right so what we're going to add is another bull variable here but a different one so make sure that you come in here and actually get a new bull variable you don't want to just clone it it won't it won't work all right so we're gonna do bull variable two when it's here set it to true we're gonna clone it we're gonna move it over here i'm gonna turn it to false and then with that we're actually going to put a another if right here and this if will essentially turn it off if people get get out of range so let's go here and we're gonna get another copy of that bull variable two we just got Bring it over here, just so we have something to look at. So we basically put it in between this final delay and this bool variable. And then if it's true, keep going. If it's false, don't keep going. So what this will do is make it so that you, you, you go through here, it flips all the bulls onto true, it's following you, and then it'll shoot at you. Right. And then once I go here, it will still follow and do its final shot. And then once it's done with its final shot, it won't go anymore. We need to get players to take damage when they're shot. Now in Jumbotron, if you're shot one time, you die. So we're just gonna make it that way. We need a player definition board. That's a player definition board. And then we configure, or I'm sorry, we edit it. And then go in here and get an event receiver. And then we configure that for when a player is hit. Projectile hit player, that's what we need. Then we want to, let's just say, respawn the player that was hit, right? just to make it super easy so collision data get player all right and then when it hits somebody i think we're just going to respawn them so we can 
We're gonna use set position because I don't like there's so many extra ports and stuff There's no reason at least for for what for our purposes right here with no life or anything We can just say if it hits somebody if it, We can just say if it hits somebody set that person's position to I, I don't know I like to create mine with vectors, so We'll just do vector create uh Let's respawn them on the roof. I know the coordinates for the roof is 0, 10, 0, so. And then let's make sure that we push this as active, or active, and then push updated. This is the start trigger volume. It's starting to follow me. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Don't hit me, don't hit me. That's, oh my god. Okay, we might need to slow the bullets down a little bit. That's a lot. <laughs> hold on, let's, let's, wait, wait, wait. It's gonna hit me. Wait, hold on. Oh my gosh okay you you okay we need to slow the bullets down they're a little fast let's go 25 that might give me a little bit more of a chance to to run away oh yeah okay that's a lot that's a lot better okay so now this is working for one player when one player is in here we need to switch it so that it follows the closest player right so number one we have some networking to deal with we're gonna do if local is room authority because that if you if you had multiple people in here running this system right now since it's not switching it to only work on the room authority players room it's essentially getting different rotations from everybody's computer differently and it's and it's not it's going to look all janky and stuff so in order to have it work with more than one person in the room you have to add this chip in not only that we want it to go after the closest player so we need a get closest There we go, and we are just going to hook up get all players to the target. The origin is going to be the position of our, our object right there. This will be the closest player, so we hook that in right here, and now it's getting the closest player to it. It's pointing at that person, and it's going to fire at that person. So I forgot these variables need to be synced. <laughs> 